In this video, we will look at the real world influences on Frank Herbert in relation to the Fremen, and we'll draw on the worlds of Dune by Tom Huddleston. It tells us Frank Herbert loved the wilderness, and this would relate back to images from his childhood in the Pacific, and he later loved to explore that wilderness, perhaps like Paul and his mother wandering the desert. But the main seed of Dune would be planted, the book tells us, when, in 1957, a political acquaintance encouraged Frank Herbert to pay a visit to a US Department of Agriculture. It was a research station near Florence, Oregon, which was pioneering a successful experiment in controlling what was called desert creep. This is how the desert slowly overtakes the perhaps most vibrant land around it. In this case, poverty grass was used that can live in poor sandy soil. This was combating the desert creep. Now Frank Herbert took the invite given to him and made notes for a possible magazine article. And this idea stuck with him. He might have thought, how would it be if the desert creep took over a planet? Could it be brought back to life again? Another influence, as the book tells it, the author was particularly informed by the work of Paul Bigelow Sears, an American scientist whose 1935 book Deserts on the March attempted to offer ecological solutions to an American readership suffering the ravages of the Dust Bowl by pinpointing the way humans were affecting the environment through deforestation and soil erosion, leading inevitably to the desertification witnessed during the Depression. Another observation that the book makes, and that I never thought of, is that Frank Herbert was a sailor, and the book says, The Fremen themselves often resemble bands of sailors equipped with charts, maps, and arcane knowledge, navigating my compass, or paracompass, and the stars from one safe harbour to another. We're told Frank Herbert also read classical literature, such as Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. So it's not something... I have noticed, but there is at least a kernel of knowledge in that. It's a cool fact. We also get told that the money he earned from the books, he bought two boats. One was called Caladan, the other Ganema. Caladan, the home planet for Paul Atreides, of course, and Ganema, the name of one of Paul Mordeeb's children. Now we get to the origin of the sandworms. In James Fraser's seminal study of myth and religion, Scottish anthropologist Fraser examined legend and religious texts from across the globe to find points of comparison, among them recurring images of dragons and sea monsters that appear in everything. To create Shahulud, Herbert took inspiration from the dragons and serpents, often referring to as worms, that appear throughout European mythology. Notably in the old English story of the warrior Beowulf, Herbert himself would describe the sandworms as the archetypical black beast, the one who lives underground in the cavern with the gold. Splice clearly replacing the gold in Frank Herbert's vision. As for the Fremen themselves, Frank Herbert also took inspiration from the real world, notably the survival practices employed by the sand people of the Kala. Lahari Desert in Botswana. That place, like Arrakis, has gone from a water-rich place to a desert. I really like the details here, so we will give an extended quote. Nomadic hunter-gatherers who congregate in bands and family groups. The San are unique in their ability to exist in some of the most unforgiving environments on Earth, where their day-to-day -day survival requires extraordinary discipline to conserve energy. The San often spend their daylight hours almost entirely motionless, inching through patches of shade and breathing through the nose to the limit and loss of moisture, a lesson very much espoused by the Fremen. The system mats or blankets to avoid direct contact with the heated ground, and in extreme circumstances, might completely bury themselves in sand, even soaking it with urine to cool it further. They are familiar with every plant that hoards moisture, from edible succulent tubers to wild desert cucumbers, and where the original consumers of a medicinal planet plant named Houdia, which has now been scientifically recognised as a natural appetite suppressant. So you can see the parallels of these moments with the Fremen, who save so much water, even reclaiming it from the dead. Now what about that iconic look of the Fremen, the still suit? What lies behind that? You can live with one and barely lose any water even in the deep desert. Is there anything like this that inspired Herbert's imagination? One source suggested is that Frank Herbert would have been familiar with 
existing closed loop survival systems such as spacesuits, orbital capsules, and diving bells. No one had ever imagined a desert suit that could recycle the bodies on water, so perhaps it was one of those sources along with a little thought to what his characters needed. An author, Leslie Bleach, who wrote Sabres of Paradise, would be a big influence with several direct quotes used in Dune, which are lessons to Paul when his to kill with the point or tip lacks artistry. And the proverb, Polish comes from the city, wisdom from the hills, which was amended to the desert in Dune. One other word you might be familiar with is Chakobsa. The book enlightens us with one of the ancient hunting languages of the Caucasus is also a secret tongue known to the Fremen and the Bene Gesserit. Padishah is a name for the Russian Tsar, and is also the hereditary title of the Emperor in Dune, whilst the Kinjal is a double-edged blade worn by the warriors who followed Shamil, and was rediscovered several millennia later by the nobles of Frank Herbert's universe. In addition, the name Siech Tabar, Mordib's hidden home in Arrakis, combines two words for camp, from the language of the Cossacks, Tsarist warriors who were the sworn enemies of Shamil's people, and one other influence from Sabres is how it shows a guerrilla war between an oppressed population, the Fremen in the case of Frank Herbert's Dune, against a more advanced civilization, the Harkonnens and the larger powers of the Imperium in Frank Herbert's novel. And the last little bit here, a number of words in the book are taken from Arabic, and with the support of the book we will do a few now. Arabic words words such as Sayyid or Master, Nabe is a member of a Fremen tribe, and a word for deputy in Arabic. Shaihulud, the Fremen name for the great sand worm, borrowed from two Arabic words, Shai meaning thing and Hulud meaning eternal. But of course there are many others. An influence the book suggests is the legend of Hassan e Sabath. He might have sparked an idea in Frank Herbert's imagination. He headed up an order of assassins a secretive band of religious warriors bound together through the use of mind-altering substances and enthralled to a near-godlike leader who had come from far away to grant them the gift of enlightenment and create a new paradise on earth. You clearly see parallels here for Paul who comes to Arrakis. There has been myths seeded by the Bene Gesserit on the planet for him to tap into, though he doesn't know initially, and thus he becomes a great leader amongst the Fremen. Little bits that tie in. He will be a leader who has come from far away. And of course in June this is known as the Lisan al Gaib, the voice from the outer world. At the time he was writing, such myths weren't hard to come by. There are interestingly also Native American influences. Frank Herbert knew a man who was a member of a Native American tribe. And Frank Herbert as a young man was taken under this person's wing, just like Paul was taken in by Stilgar. This friend is also perhaps where the Fremen got their beliefs on conservation from. And Frank Herbert hunted with this man. Perhaps that where the idea for the Maker's Hooks came from. And on that note, friends, we'll wrap up today's video going over some of the examples from the worlds of Dune and where influencers might have come from for Frank Herbert's masterpiece.